Okay. Welcome. My name is Sibby Nicolette Bonilla Portner. Uh, my real name is Siobhan Bonilla. Um, I have been practicing law now for almost three years. Um, I am from the Bronx, New York. I am happily married, and I attended Ave Maria School of Law in Naples, Florida um, in August of 2014. I, success I successfully graduated in May 2017. I was the president of the Black Law Students Association from, I, I want to say from the spring of 20. The spring of 2015 up until the spring of 2016, I then served as the regional director for the Southern Region of the Black Law Students Association as one of the members who helped raise funds for the Black Law Students Association. I did that within the same term. And then I became editor in chief of the Law Journal at Ave Maria School of Law from 2016 to 2017. From that point, um, I successfully graduated, and after I graduated, I knew I was dog tired. I was exhausted. Um, when you spend more than five years working towards your degrees, I have two bachelor's degrees and my juris doctorate. So you can only you can only imagine after graduating, I was exhausted after law school. So I sat for the my my first bar exam in July of 2017, and unfortunately. Well, no, I'm going to say this. I fortunately failed it in July 2017. I failed the bar exam then. Um, I was 25 going on 26 when I failed the first bar exam. Meanwhile, I was 22 going on 23 when I went into law school. So at that point in time, I had, I, I was young. And I will honestly say about myself, now that I'm 30 years old, <laughs> I'm a practicing attorney, and I was 27 when I became an attorney. And um, I, I was dog tired, so I didn't have the mental capacity at the time to understand what I was doing when I first took the bar exam back in 2017. Um, I waited a whole year, and then I sat for the bar exam again the second time in July 2018. Unfortunately, once again, I failed in the sense where I should have been ready, but I was not. But I then went on to pass it my third time in April of 2019. So after I had passed the bar in April of 2019, I had to wait for my ethics portion to clear so that I could be sworn in. I was sworn in December 11th, 2019. And due to, you know, the holidays and everything else, the bar, the Florida bar did not process my, my, my ethics and everything else. By the time everything was done, it didn't get processed until January 31st. So according to the Florida bar, the Florida bar website, I, you know, I've been practicing now for two years. Um, I want to say this to everybody who is watching. Please do not think that it is burdensome for you to fail it more than once. I currently coach students now. I only coach retakers. I do not coach first-time takers. First takers, I think it's imperative that you do sit for it. Um, if it's your first time trying to deal with it, do it. Um, especially if you've, if you've studied for it, when I finally passed the bar exam, it really took a lot of, of grit when I passed it my third time. And at that time in my life, when I had, when I was on the journey to studying for it, I had, I was working for the state of, I was working for the state of Florida as a court program specialist. So I was really much a high paid clerk. I handled family and civil litigation matters. And upon passing, I went into the state attorney's office where I became an assistant state prosecutor, where there I didn't really, I, there I, I truly understood what it meant to really practice the law. I, I don't want students to feel that them passing the bar exam is indicative of them practicing law. The practice of law has nothing to do was taking the bar exam. And I think Miss Spear can, she can, she can shed some light on that 
um, when this gets published. But at the same time in token, what you learn with the bar exam, it's just an exam. You literally take it to pass it. That's it. Because when you're in the practice of law, there are things that come up that do not come up with the bar exam. When you're appearing in court, when there are certain motions that are filed, documents that need to be filed, unless you are interning or working as a summer associate, the bar exam is just a piece of paper to prove that you are competent. In the state of Florida, competency means you have the wherewithal and the knowledge to practice law. And competency is a plethora of definitions that the state of Florida has. I cannot speak to other jurisdictions. And what I mean by other jurisdictions, I mean by other states. So that goes for all the 50 states. I can't speak for that. But every state has their own way of determining competency. Along with California State, New York State, um, some of the UBE jurisdictions, Texas, Florida is one of the hardest states to sit for a bar exam for. Um, nine times out of 10, they will tell you that you need to at least start studying at least six months to. When I failed the bar exam the second time, my everybody's circumstances are unique, right? So when I when I started studying for the bar exam, Sibby, I think we're having some um, technical glitches. Um, you're gonna have to start that particular part over whenever you're able to get internet access again. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, hi everybody. Hope that you guys are enjoying. There we go. Yeah, okay, you had a, here I am. You had a um, really bad glitch. We missed I'm sorry. everything you said. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, but back to what I was saying before. Um, just Nina, let me know if you if you all can hear me or if I glitch, just shoot me a message. Mm -hmm. Um, but the the practice of law has is not indicative of taking the bar exam. It's not. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is with all types of states. Like I said, besides New York, Texas, and California, and some of the UBE states, or as everybody would like to call it, the uniform bar examination states, Florida is one of the hardest bar exams to take. Um, and I speak that with all truth because it took me, it took me about three to four and a half months to study for this exam. The third time I sat for it, there was a lot at stake because everybody's circumstance is different. So the third time I decided to take it, you know, I come from humble means. Um, although my parents, they were very motivational in saying, you can do this. I had to seek assistance from not only my family, but from other relatives that could help me with paying for it. What a lot of people don't understand is that when you graduate from law school, sometimes, and, and, and this is my bone of contention, I'm just going to put it out there. A lot of law schools, when you're a first time taker, they care about you. I'm just going to be honest. They want you to pass so that you make them look good. When you fail at the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, you know, I'm working with a student right now who's taking, who's taking the bar exam and this is over her fifth time taking it. Um, with that being said, you know, the, the cost to taking this exam can be exponential in terms of you got to pay for the hotel fee, you got to pay for the application fee, you got to pay for the laptop fee. You also have to pay just to eat, to sit for this exam. So we're talking about, especially for the state of Florida, we're talking about over $1,200. And when you graduate from law school, you're already broke. <laughs> You're already trying to figure out how you're going to become an attorney and make that that extra wage without without hurting yourself financially. So I think that's really important to take into account when I took the bar exam, thankfully, and I'm blessed that I was, you know, I was able to reach out to friends and family that could assist me. And 
I started really early when I failed in September 2018. I was like, oh, no, we're not doing this. I'm not, no, I'm not doing this anymore. And then I had my godmother, my mother, my godmother, real close friends, my dad, they all came to me and said, third time's in charm, do it. You're going to do it. Take it again. We're not failing this. So I was like, okay. You know, I had my godmother and my, my in-laws. My in-laws were amazing help. My in-laws reached out and they were just like, okay, we'll help you do this. We'll help you do that. So I got two bar coaches and I got a bar coach from the University of North Carolina because my family stretches back into North Carolina and New York. Um, This bar coach, she was amazing. And then the second bar coach I got was a classmate of mine who took it four times and he coached me mentally. There are two types of coaches. One that helps you with the study portion and the other that helps you with the mental health portion. Um, Mental health is so important, guys. I want you to keep that in mind. This bar exam, if you let it, it can hurt you mentally, but it's not abnormal. So when I spoke to both of these bar coaches, every day I was on the phone with them. Every day I was doing questions. They were checking me on what I did wrong, what I did right. And so I literally cut off family and friends for about a good four to five months. The time it took me to sit for the exam until after, I cut everybody off, even Nina. I was like, Nina, I love you, <laughs> girl. But I got to pass this exam, <laughs> and I got I to gotta, I gotta keep the conversations to a minimum. So that's what I did. I love you I too, cu- girl. <laughs> I cut a lot of people off. I Not cut off in the, in the sense where I was angry with anybody, but I needed to get me together. So I cut a lot of close friends and family members. I put them on halt. I sat for the bar exam February 26th and 27th. I I can't remember the dates, but it's, it's always the last week of February. And so I remember, I'll never forget it. I was convention center prior to the pandemic. You know that it can be really exhausting. You're seeing everybody around playing fake like they're happy. They're happy to be there. They know their law. They know they're going to pass. And I just stood away from everybody. You have to block your mind out. And I'm thankful I had people like Nina and my other two mentors um, who coached me through the bar exam. They said, listen, stay in your bubble. You got to create a bubble for those two days, especially in the state of Florida. The bar exam is two days. So for two days, I had to create a bubble. And the first day was the writing portion, which was the, um, I, it was the, it was the state portion and I blocked everybody out. I didn't care about nobody, nothing. My mother-in-law was actually there with me that day, those two days. And I blocked them out. I had my mom on the phone and my mom was like, you got this, right? And I was like, I got this. You literally have to, when you study accordingly, you need to walk into that bar exam like she's a whole female and you about ready to fight. You can't think about anything that is going to hinder your ability to move forward. And so the first day I walked in and I knew that I, I you know, I knew that I had passed after the first day, the writing portion, everything. I was like, OK, I, I feel good. Now, the second day is what trips people up mostly. The second day was the was the MBE portion, which is the, um, I think it's, I forgot the name of it. You see, it's, it's been so, it's been a minute. Um, the multiple bar examination, I think it is, uh, uh, it's the MBE. And when I sat for that, I thought I failed it. I thought I failed it. Mind you, two months prior to the exam, my husband had proposed to me. We had been dating for about four years. And so my husband had proposed to me and I was just like, oh my God, like, why would you do this right now? And it actually motivated me because I held off on planning my wedding because I really thought I failed the second portion. And I thought I was going to have to go in and sit for the, for the MBE, which is the second day. And the second day I sat for it, Oh, I think I failed it. It's cool. Like, I'll just sit for that. At least I got one, one, one nick in, you know, you know, I passed one portion and when the results came out, I will never forget it. I was in shock. I woke up at like, I couldn't sleep that whole day at five o'clock in the morning. I woke up and results were not due for another four and a half hours. Um, 
but I couldn't sleep because I was like, I had to have passed at least one portion. So I downgraded myself and I thought, okay, I only passed one portion, whatever. The morning I woke up, my husband, you know, I'm, I'm Afro-Latina. So when I start getting crazy, I either call people or I start cleaning. <laughs> I started cleaning our house and I remember it's like nine o'clock on the dot. I'm like, where are these bar results? The, the server kept crashing. So when people get onto the same site more than once, the server starts to crash. When 10.15 hit, and this was April 19th, 2019, the server crashed. And then about 10 o'clock, 10.15, around there, I checked and the results popped up. Two weeks prior to the exam, I gave my mother my 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 identification numbers because when you sit in the state of florida they're not like other jurisdictions where they blast your name on who passed they give you numbers and so i gave my mother my numbers and i said mom if the server crashed because i i've been through it twice before it it's nothing new that the server doesn't crash so i gave my mother my numbers i said listen if i can't if i can't get onto the server and you happen to get onto it you can, you can check my, my numbers. So I turn around, 10 o'clock comes, 10.15 comes, rolls around, and then the bar results pop up. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, and then I see pass, 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 no. And I bought a, my uncle had bought me a whole new laptop at that point, so I just almost dropped it on the floor. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I passed. Like I passed both portions. But it said no because I need to take my MPRE, which is the multiple, uh, which is the, um, which is the the professional responsibility ethics exam. And when I had, when I had gotten the results, I was like, okay, I know I'm not going to get admitted because I got to take the MPRE. But I had taken comfort that I had passed. So I want everybody out there to know that. You may have issues with friends, family who may not understand. That's okay. That is okay. Because if they don't understand where you're coming from, then they're not friends to begin with. And I remember the sacrifices that were made for this, you know, even up until I had passed the bar. You know, I, I'm from the Bronx, New York. My entire family is in New York. It, it's just at the one point, it was just me down here. So I've been in Florida State now for seven years and some change. Um, if you do not have friends and family in your corner that is willing to see you succeed, then, you, then, then they're not it. They're not it. If it's truly your ambition to become a lawyer, whether you practice family, criminal, civil, commercial, transactional, I need you to understand that it's okay to put you first. Put you first and reach out to people like myself, Nina, or whoever can help you to get through that hurdle. But if you have taken the bar exam and you failed it, it is okay. I, have, I know people who have failed it more than once, twice, three times, four times, and they are the best practicing attorneys that I know. Um, you have attorneys who practice the bar, the, you know, upon passing it the first time, and they don't know how to practice, and so they risk their license because, oh, I passed the first time, so I know what I'm doing. You know, it is some of the greatest attorneys who failed it more than once. once. That do, or, that, that, that are amazing. Um, if you look at JFK, if you look at Sibby, you're going to have to repeat that part. You started breaking up again. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with your audio today. But. Cool I, I, I'm here now. <laughs> so, I mean, um, other than that, um, definitely reach out to me. My Facebook is the same as the screensaver. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Same, um, you know, I have the same, same screen name uh, for my Facebook LinkedIn. Reach out to me, private message. Um, I do tutor my students pro bono. I do it pro bono because I know 
what it means to take an exam and to ensure that, um, I, 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 you know, I, I, I know what it means to, to take an exam more than once to fail it and, and feel adequate. But my job is not to teach you the law. I do not teach my students the law. I never do. You know the law. The question is, can you put in the work to sit down and focus so that you can take an exam? So take the exam. Let's try and take the exam. And I only deal with retakers. I do not deal with first-time takers. Only because you could be a first-time taker and pass it on the first try, and that's great. That's 100% great. But if you are a second, third, eighth-time taker, you know, definitely reach out to me and we can work on a schedule that'll get you moving. But for now, I do not handle first time takers. I deal with second, third. I, I deal with multiple retakers because I want them to be able to resonate. I, I want them to know that my thoughts resonate with them. They can, they can do the impossible without thinking that they can do it. So that's my job. Um, I used to be a former criminal law attorney. I am now a civil law attorney. Um, so definitely reach out to me. My email is posted below along with my contact information on my social media. Definitely reach out and I'm here to help. And once again, it's pro bono. I don't charge these crazy fees. You got a lot of coaches that charge over a thousand dollars and above to, to, and that's how they make their money. That's right. So um, me, I do it pro bono. I want to give back to our community, especially to my, my sisters and brothers. If you need any help, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to reach out. Awesome. Sibby, girl, you gave them a whole lot and some more. Now I have to cut up a couple because, you know, audio <laughs> tech, it just don't always work the way we want it to work. But Understood. you had a lot of great points. And one point I just really want to touch on again that you said and I think Shana made a good note of um, of trying to collect the words as you were saying them um, is please do not think that it's burdensome for you to fail the bar more than once um, this this statement you said that was just powerful um, and I think that it just needs to be reset um, I think that we don't talk about this enough but like it's not a burden. You're not a burden for having to take the bar over and over again. I might not have yeah. had to take it over and over again, but I think sometimes we get in our own heads and we start being like, dang, this is costing so much money. Like I might as well just leave it alone because it's just, it's too much. It's not a burden and it's going to be the way that you need it to be at that point in time. So if possible, you know, guys, remember Sibby's words. Please do not think that it's burdensome for you to fail the bar more than once. Um, another one that you said that was a really good point is, is the practice of law is not indicative of taking the bar exam. You've heard me talk about these types of things in our mm -hmm. law sister circle group so many times. These exams do not determine your success. They don't determine whether you know anything. Honestly, they just determine what you can remember on a given day at a given point in time better than everybody else in that room, okay? And the importance of having a support system is not taken for granted. And then lastly, talking about staying in your bubble, while preparing for the bar exam, a lot of us don't even know that we need a bubble for the bar exam, but it is a definite <laughs> needed thing. Um, I was literally falling asleep in the Starbucks parking lot from like <laughs> seven to nine so I could get a little nap in before I went back and study because I was up there at five. But so. let me say this for, for and, and I want to make a good point, and I'm so glad we're having the conversation. Mm -hmm. I will say that my third time, I took more breaks. Mm -hmm. we are so conditioned you got to study 10 to 12 hours mm -mm. for an exam and I'm like girl I was knocked out in my car we you. had some days that we just <laughs> the, talked about boys and not this <laughs> yes the second and third time I took the bar exam I was working a full-time job I was working mm -hmm. an eight to five job and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this here with grace but it, it it's a known fact, especially if you're like us, a woman of color, mm -hmm. and you are a practicing attorney. There are going to be a lot of phases where, if you're, because you have that situation too, where a lot of retakers have no choice but to work, and you will have, if you have an employer 
who does not have the mindset to see you succeed and to give you the tools that you need, especially if they know you're trying to be a lawyer. Because they see your resume and they know you went to law school, right? Mm -hmm. If they can't give that to you, you got to snatch it back and demand that for yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. you won't give me the time off. Okay, you won't do this for me. Cool. I'm going to make the time for me. So mm -hmm. if I came home from work and it was mentally exhausting, I know if I start studying, I'm going to get questions wrong, right? I'm going to get mm -hmm. questions wrong because my mind is elsewhere on how my day was. Mm -hmm. Or I'm exhausted and I'm tired. <laughs> so <Thank> you <laughs> so you have to create a schedule and there were moments in my third time studying where I was like no I ain't touching that <laughs> tomorrow 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 gets here and the next day gets here and I'm like mm -mm. I ain't no. touching that neither <laughs> third day third day I feel good I'm gonna drink I'm I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and I'm gonna get it my Saturdays and Sundays, I'm going to spend three to four hours studying. I'm going to put myself on a schedule, get me a calendar. I'm going to look at the two portions I got to take. Okay, MBE, the, the, the multi-federal MBE. Okay, I'm going to spend this week doing this. It's about scheduling and making sure your heart and your mind is happy. Because mm -hmm. when the world around you is sick, you got to make sure that you are up to standard. When the world around you basically implies you can't you won't you 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 can't move forward no screw that you have everything to do you have everything in your brain and power and that's what i coach my students to do i'm like no 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 you're either working you quit your job or you're 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 not working doesn't matter you can do this put yourself on the schedule we're going to put you on a schedule mm -hmm. this is what we're going to do you got you know especially if let's say you failed it and you find out results in september you failed it you're going to take a month for you. Take that moment to process, feel like my, my, my mentor, Kyla Coleman, always told me, and she's a great practicing attorney here in Orlando, Florida. She said to me always, feel what you need to feel. Mm -hmm. So take the time. I took a month. And then, because you know me, Nina, I don't stay down for too long. So like the second week of October, I wasn't even down a month. I was like, I'm going to get it. And then when I spoke to my bar coaches, they were just like, you're ahead of the game. Stop. Start again in Thanksgiving. And that was the best advice I, 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 I got. Because mm -hmm. rather than doing what, October, November, December, January, February, rather than doing a six, six months, I ended up doing four and a half months of study with the proper care and the encouragement. That's what a lot of these, these bar takers need to understand. You can't listen to nobody. You can't listen to no, you can't listen to nobody, but you can't not listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope this resonates with whoever and just know you'll make it. You just have to be strong enough to understand what your limitations are. Yes, ma'am. And be honest. All right. Well, we thank you, Sibby, for coming. Your story, I'm sure, will inspire many. Shayna, mm. put us out. 